kind of big steps is Ford willing to make? I mean, look, you've committed to small cars. You've yep. committed to them on a global basis. You also make, uh, you know, the best-selling truck in America. You mm -hmm. make big SUVs. Is there a time that you foresee that maybe Ford says, all right, we're going to stop making gas guzzlers. We just won't do it? Well, yeah, and, and that's right now uh, uh -huh. b because we're going to still make uh, a full line of vehicles up through the trucks. But we've committed to making every single vehicle that we make the best in its segment in fuel economy. So if you want an F-Series truck, great. And we're going to give you the most fuel-efficient uh, truck on the market. And that's our commitment from the smallest vehicle right up to the biggest truck. You call this, Bill, a, the dawn of a new age in the auto industry. And, and that can be a very good thing <laughs> for this struggling industry in this country. Uh, but do you think that the U.S. and global governments that you work with are doing enough to put their money and their efforts and their support behind the push to renewable energy uh, in, in, as a whole and also electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, fuel cell? I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's not an, an easy answer across the board. I think uh, our, our government is only now starting to work with us, which is a great thing for years. You know, it's been a, almost an adversarial relationship. Really? Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it was all, you know, kind of command and control. Uh, fine you if you do something wrong, but we don't want to work with you. There were some exceptions, even you know, ten years ago. But today, there's a there's much more of a recognition that there's got to be collaboration, not just with the autos, but with the energy providers. Uh, there's got to be policy that that really makes it all work, because other countries are doing it. You mentioned what's going on around the world. I mean, places like China, you know, they're putting enormous resources, uh, both human and financial, into batteries and electrification and. We don't want to be behind in this country. Well, that's, that's the problem. It, and, and battery technology is wonderful, and it, it's great when you can produce those batteries in this country. I know Ford is doing that right. at a new battery plant in, in Michigan. Yep. But overall, the majority of the batteries that power the electric cars that are going to hit our marketplace are from Korea and China. Well, and, and that's one thing we've got to worry about is it, from a national security standpoint is we don't want to trade one dependency called oil for another dependency called batteries where we don't control our destiny. The conversation has really changed and focused on electrics. Is that the right move? Yeah, I, I think it is the right move, and it makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, but get, given what I just said a minute ago about collaboration, mm -hmm. until we have a national infrastructure where plugging is easy and, and ubiquitous, it's going, that's going to hinder the acceptance of electric vehicles because customers don't want to have range anxiety. They don't want to think, okay, how far can I go, and where am I going to plug in, and how long do I have to plug in? So, you know, those are all things that we have to solve together, uh, government, the utilities, the autos, and we're working on it. Um, but, you know, there's no silver bullet. We're still working on, um, on ethanol. And it's interesting. If you look at biofuels. Well, I haven't heard that word in a long time. Well, but if you look at biofuels, um, you know, we're now in the next generation of biofuels, the, the cellulosic biofuel. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of sense for this country. It's interesting. Probably doesn't make as much sense for other countries that don't have the land that we have. But we have the land. We can, we can and it's not, I think the, where people got hung up is, is on the corn equation. But we're past that now, and you, you can make it from garbage, you can make it from, you know, uh, sawgrass, you can make it from lots of things. Do your customers want these vehicles? Do they want electrics, or is the government and legislation and, and the auto industry pushing these to the market? They want them if they, if they don't perceive big trade-offs to have to get them. Sure, I mean, everybody wants to be green. I mean, if you ask 100 people out here, you know, do you consider yourself an environmentalist, probably 99 of them will say <laughs> yes. But then you start to say, okay, what are you willing to give up for that? And, you know, all of a Not sudden the, the numbers start to drop off pretty quickly. Now you have a plug-in hybrid, which, you know, really extends your range. And, but it's still fun to drive, and you can do cool things. And so now customers are saying, I'm really not, I don't have to give up anything. And I think that's the key for all of this. And so for pure electric, it's, it's going to be ubiquity of plug-ins and range to remove any uh, customer uh, trepidation.